All right, guys. It's great to be here in Boston. Um, I know Mark and I, we met at Northeastern in 2003. So uh, we've spent a lot of time in Boston, so it's good to be back. Um, today I'm gonna talk about GraphQL. And it's sort of a little clickbaity title, all you ever wanted to know. It's more like a nice introduction. Um, so how many of you guys have used GraphQL? In, uh, in production? Um, cool. So hopefully this isn't too basic for everybody, but um, uh, let's, let's dive in. So what we're going to cover today, what is GraphQL? What is it like to develop with GraphQL? I'll give you a short demo. Um, and then also we're at the Jamstack meetup. So it's sort of like, why does this matter to the Jamstack? And how does it fit in with this meetup? So what is GraphQL? And I like to think of GraphQL as three different things. It's a schema language, uh, schema definitions, sorry, a query language and a resolution framework. And so let's dive into each piece. So for a schema, uh, it's a strongly typed uh, language which defines the uh, structure of the data of your app. So in this case, we're building a movie app. And so we have a movie type, a person type, and we're showing the actors and directors involved with the movie. Um, and this language right here is what's called SDL, which is the schema description language. And this is sort of the cross-platform way of describing a GraphQL schema. Uh, the schema also describes how you interact with your data. So you have queries and you have mutations. And so queries are how you fetch your data. So they're like a get request for REST. Um, but one of the nice parts about GraphQL is it's very descriptive. So you actually have to tell the GraphQL uh, endpoint exactly what you want to get back. So it's kind of hard to see here, I know. But in this query, I'm, I'm fetching the list of movies that I've watched. And say I'm getting the movie, the title of the year. And then the shape of the data that I get back is exactly, there's, there's parity between the request and the response. And then you have mutations, and mutations are how, how you modify your data. Um, so right here, we're adding um, Die Hard to a list of movies that we want to watch. Um, and then also the third thing was this idea of a resolution framework. So this is where GraphQL can get sort of complicated and might be confusing to beginners, but there are multiple implementations of GraphQL. GraphQL itself is just a spec. spec. But each implementation provides their own resolution framework for how you fulfill the GraphQL queries. And this is a, a feature in its own right. Um, and so GraphQL JS is the original implementation that's done originally at Facebook. And now it's under its own um, organization. Um, and so we're going to use that just to show you guys the OG. Um, so the resolution framework looks like this. The main piece is that's something called a resolver. And so a resolver is how you specify the implementation of a query or a mutation. So in this case, um, we're specifying how do we get our list of movies to watch and how do we add, remove, and mark as watched. So we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and this is sort of a, an example of how you bind. So you have SDL, which is describing your data types. And then you actually can bind resolvers. You bind the code to we'll take questions in a bit. I am, and we're going to go over this code in a live demo. So I'll zoom in. So now we're at the demo. So that's why. So you didn't have to wait long. All right. Here. Make myself a little bit more comfy here. All right. So now is your chance to tell me if it's legible or not. And I can make it bigger. How, how legible is this? Is that good? Cool. So this is what I was, was telling you guys about, where we had our, our type. We have our SDL on the left, and we have our resolvers on the right. And so you can see there's parity in our SDL and then also how we resolve things. So for each query, we have a resolver that resolves uh, the things for that query. So right here, we have our two, two watch. Um, 
uh, data type. And then we have our query, uh, the to watch list, which gets a list of the to watch objects. And then the way that we figure that out or we resolve that is we use our, our database. And in this case, it's just a mock JSON file, but we call a list function on there. And that's sort of how we define that. So this, this right here is a little bit abstract. So I, I put together a small demo. And so this is what's called graphical. And graphical is one of uh, the tools that was developed with GraphQL JS to make GraphQL more accessible to, to users. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to, here I can make this bigger, is that good? Um, so now we can actually run the query that we were just showing the implementation for. So over here, we have our query on the left and we have movie title and whether or not we watched it. And like I was saying before, there's absolute parity between what you query for and what you get back. So if I only need the movie title, I can only get the movie title. Or if I want all the features, I can get that. So whatever your, your application needs. And the other neat part is that it's self-documenting. So by just clicking on the query, I can see what fields that I have in, uh, in my schema. But I also prepared for you guys like a basic app. So to do app is usually the, the stereotypical app. So I made like a to watch app. And so we have some movies that we want to watch and movies that we may or may not have watched and movies that we might want to take off of our list. Um, so here, now let's, this, this is a pretty basic app. So let's, let's work on enhancing it. And the way that we're going to do that is by enhancing our schema adding some resolvers, and then putting it all together with uh, a, a React app that I have the sample for right here. So what's great is that I have my two watch list, and right now it's just a basic movie title and a watch Boolean, but it'd be great if I added some more properties to that. So one of the things that would be great to add would be a, something like the actual movie. Let's get more than the movie title. Um, so what I would want to do is that's an object. So I would want to define my own data type. So let's go up to the top and let's define a new type in SDL and call it movie. And so a movie obviously has the title and it has the release date. And so I'm going to sort of use some magic here so you don't have to watch me type. <laughs> um, but basically what I just un unfolded uh, was uh, a type and I added it down here to my to watch item where I have a movie and then I have a title, I have a rating, I have an actor. Great. Like let's go do it. Let's 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 go over to graphical and run the query. Let's add movie. Here let's let's refresh so it knows about my thing. Let's go to movie. It knows about this. This is awesome. I need the title. I need the rating. I need the director. Let's go. Oh no. Well, obviously my app has no idea how to get all this information. So like, let's go and fix that issue. So let's add a resolver. So in our, you can see over here, we have a two watch resolver. And then underneath this two watch item, you, ha you can define resolvers for each field. So, for so let's make a resolver for the movie. So resolver simply is what you return. So if I return something like uh, the title uh, is Jamstack, right? And then the director is, you know, Mark. Um, and I come over here and I run my query. Here we go. I have now, I now have some static data in my API and I have, but everything's Jamstack. So that's kind of boring. So let's add some real code and sort of this pre-bake out of the oven comes a, uh, a resolver. And so the magic of source control, I will implement resolver, but I'm, I'm going to show you guys uh, what exactly I'm doing right here. And so it's hard to see with the indentation. But all I'm doing is I'm really just, I'm calling fetch to OMDB, which is an open source version of IMDB. And I'm going to grab the movie information, shove it into a JSON object, and then return it with my resolver. And what I'm using to query for is I'm, I'm grabbing 
uh, I'm looking up the movie by the title. So my existing list should work. And so this brings up a great point. GraphQL is really awesome at augmenting existing sources of data. So you might have an existing database where you can use GraphQL and add like virtual fields using these resolvers to sort of stitch content from multiple sources together. So let's see what that data looks like. So if we run that, now we have some real data coming from a real API. So obviously, you know, we have all of our ratings. Um, and now if we look at our app though, it's still, still pretty boring. Um, so it'd be great to add some, some, some stuff to this. So let's actually pop open this. And this is actually a React app. Um, and it's all in one file. I know that's bad form, but it's good for demos. Let me, cl let me close this guy out so you get the full width. Um, so up at the top, the important parts are this is a React app. And it, well, this isn't a React tutorial, so I'm gonna buzz through this a little bit. But the important part is how we communicate with GraphQL. And one of the most popular libraries out there is this library called React Apollo. And so what React Apollo does is it creates a way to bind a GraphQL query with some presentational components. So that's exactly what we're doing. Here's our watch list component and we're binding our watch list query to that. And so what we're doing is we're taking a query, we could paste it right out of the graphical interface that we had before. We could paste it right into the code, press, press go, and now we have a React app showing all of this information. So the React app simply, um, we have our watch list and we're iterating over there. We're creating a list item with a movie for each item. And so one of the things that we can do over here is what we have is we have our, our data. And so let's fetch that movie data. So let's add that into our query that's in our code. And let's go and improve our movie um, component to use those um, pieces of data. So what we're doing is now we're passing in the movie object very similar to the way that we upgraded our API for upgrading our React app. And so what all this is doing is it's unpacking the movie object into some divs, into some paragraph tags and a title and showing the image element. And if we pop over here to our app, we have a much richer app. And obviously like I coded some CSS beforehand to make this look decent. Um, but we have like with very little effort, we've augmented our app. This, this would be, you know, a couple hours for you guys to put together as opposed to like days of, of creating a whole um, set of integration endpoints and then, and then uh, defining your own query language <laughs> and putting this together. So here, let's, uh, let's, let's see whether it works. So let's like add like some great movies. So there you go, we got a battlefield earth and you know, it's awful. So we saw the rating and now we wanna get rid of it. So uh, th we have this to do app. This is just a very, very quick way of showing you guys how simple it is to put together a React app with GraphQL. Um, this code will be available uh, on a GitHub repo so you guys can check it out after uh, the presentation. But let's, let's jump back to the slides for a minute. I can do that. All right, uh, present. So the, the main point of this, this sort of presentation is like, why, okay, so you've seen how cool uh, GraphQL is. Like, why does it make sense in the context of this Jam, Jamstack meetup? And how does it make your life better if you wanna build in this way? So the number one thing that I always tell people is that GraphQL is extremely clear you ask for data and then you get back data. And I like to call it, uh, what you query is what you get. So um, it's very intuitive for new front end developers to go through, explore using graphical, f play around with queries, see what data is available. And then you can, you can use that data to quickly build out interfaces with, um, you know, with ease. So here's, here's your workflow, write a query, get the data, pump it through a template and there's your app. Um, the other point that I would say is flexibility. So the traditional way of building an app like this would be to have separate rest endpoints for each service 
Um, and then depending on the use case, the view that you would want to create, you're either going to be hitting multiple APIs to get the data that you want, or you're going to be spending engineering time to integrate those items on the back end. Um, right here, it's a win-win for both cases. The front end developer is not waiting around for the back end developer to create an efficient way to get this from the back end. And also, the back end developer implements the schema once. They define how all the data fetching works, and then the GraphQL resolution framework stitches it all together for them. So it's, it's really, I like to say that this is a flexibility win. So that brings up an interesting point where we're just comparing GraphQL to REST. And so one thing that people like to say is, oh, GraphQL is just the better version of REST. Or, or, or uh, conversely, people say, oh, well, you can do all that stuff with a REST endpoint. What's the point of GraphQL? Um, and the answer to that is there are two different things. REST is very prescriptive. It happens over HTTP. It uses HTTP verbs. Um, your resources have to live in a strict path uh, uh, scheme, um, and GraphQL defines a lot of things that, that REST doesn't. It defines a, a schema definition language, resolution framework, a, a model for a language for querying and mutating your data. Um, and the, the, the truth is that GraphQL doesn't need to be used as an API at all. And so the examples of that are, a popular example is Gatsby, which is a static site generator. And what it does is it uses uh, GraphQL to pres present like a very flexible way of querying data. And none of that data actually has to be backed by APIs or, um, or it could be backed by a REST API, a GraphQL API, a Word document, an Excel sheet. They're just using it as a technology that's really convenient for stitching data together because of the resolution framework, because of the powerful query language. And like I was showing in the demo, there's also Apollo. And one of the features that I didn't show off about Apollo is not only can you have Apollo run queries and mutations against a remote server, but you can also have it work locally on the front end. So you can define local schemas and actually mutate local state and use that to manage the state for your entire app. And then also uh, take shape. Um, uses GraphQL in a, an innovative way because what we do is we actually um, load up a GraphQL server in memory and use it specifically for static site generation. And Mark will get into that a little bit later. Um, the other point I would like to bring up about GraphQL is just the community. And there's a ton of tools around GraphQL and it, it's only growing. And the GraphQL working group is just getting bigger. The spec is getting more mature. The tooling is getting more mature. Um, you have autocomplete. You have IDE integration. Um, you have linting tools. Um, you have CMSs, APIs. Uh, GitHub has its own GraphQL API to do things in GitHub. And so this community is growing even more. And so I would say that for a Jamstack developer, you know, this is a great space to invest in. And it's going to be something where um, if you know how to work with a GraphQL API, you're going to add a lot of capabilities to your tool belt. And so that would be sort of the last point I would make is why this fits in with the Jamstack, is basically using the power of the existing community, you can build a lot more than you could build on your own. So questions? In the back. Do we have a, sorry. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, you, you would basically, you would first off by, you would start off by, you know, creating a basic skeleton project for you both to work in you, and, and share that um, using version control. Um, you could also set up a local uh, server for the front end guys to see what the back end guys have implemented. And as far as in terms of collaboration between back end developers, 
you can break down the schema of the GraphQL, um, um, the schema, schema of the GraphQL API into as many files or, or using as many different file splitting techniques as you would want. And it's very flexible. It's, as you saw with the resolvers, they're pretty much just regular code. It's a very thin layer to get to where you're actually writing code. Um, did I? Yeah, and that the tool that you saw in the demo, Graphical, is part of the standard package with most GraphQL servers. So when they load up, when they check out from Git and they load up their local dev environment, they'll be able to see the documented schema of exactly what, what's available to them. In the front. Oh, sorry. So is the AWS Amplify is the same uh, thing as GraphQL or it is something that they are uh, proprietary? I'm not entirely familiar with Amplify. <laughs> um, I know they have a product called AppSync, which allows you to create a GraphQL API that's hosted on AWS. Um, and that the way that that works is you upload your own schema file to their service. And then um, you can tie um, that schema into other AWS products to fulfill the data. Um, I noticed that the the types for the GraphQL schema were like string, integers, booleans. How does GraphQL deal with sending like files? I guess over. It? So that's that's one thing, a uh, common th theme that you'll see with a lot of Jamstack services is that what you'll usually be passing around is URIs to different locations. Okay. So in the case of TakeShape, actually, we use Amazon S3 to handle our files. And so what you're doing is you're passing references to files in those buckets. And then if you want to upload files, what you can do is you can have your GraphQL server you could have a mutation that says, let me upload a file. And then what it would do is it would cryptographically sign a one-time use URL, send it down to the client as a URI, and then you can put right to that, that piece and you'll, get, you'll be able to push right to the server. Yeah. Sure. I'll let Mark do that. Are you timing it? Okay. Okay. So this one, I guess, is about uh, Apollo. You mentioned that you can use it to uh, manage your local state. Is it then, uh, is it, can, can it supplant Redux in that case? That's kind of one of their attempts is, is basically that depending on what you're doing with Redux, take shape, at take shape we use Redux because we came out before uh, Apollo had this capability. But um, it depends on what you're doing with it and whether it makes sense to implement. So if you're just dealing with things like uh, a temporary list before you're persisting to a database, you know, de depending on your use case, uh, I would say I'm more familiar with the Redux uh, style of one-way flow development. Um, but I think the idea is that if you can get comfortable, if you wanna persist everything to the server, and you're comfortable with just dealing with queries and mutations, I think that's a much simpler primitive and has like a, a shorter learning curve than say learning all about, you know, action creators and, and, and reducers and stores and, and selectors. So I think, I think there is some, some promise to that way of programming. Another? He's gonna cut me off. <laughs> One more? To uh, answer your question about Amplify, over here, uh, Amplify is not the same as Graphical, uh, but when you're setting up Amplify, it will create, it will, you, it'll ask you what API do you want to set up, REST or Graphical, and as part of that, if you choose Graphical or GraphQL, it will set up all your mutations, subscriptions, and queries based off your schema for you, which is kind of cool. Cool. We got time for more. Give Andrew a round of applause. That was great. All right. We're so, gonna do a transition. Is yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So this is my business partner, Mark, and uh, he's here to give you guys a, a little intro to to what we do at Take Shape, um, and how that 
how we've built a CMS for the Jamstack. Uh, 